England against uh, the Ivory Coast, though. Um, what's interesting about this, Simon, amongst other things, uh, amongst the fact that it's live on Talk Sport, the Ivory Coast, uh, Coast Patrice Bommel, has said that he's going to step up attempts to persuade Mark Gay of Palace to switch allegiance uh, from England to the Ivory Coast. So can he do that? Well, yeah, he thinks he can. Gay was born in Abidjan uh, on the coast of the Ivory Coast and he moved to London when he was just one, years of, yep. one, one year old. I mean... Should it be this easy, though? Switching allegiance? Um, should there be freedom? Is, should it be a case of try before you buy? I mean, Gay here, one, uh, one moment can play for one side and the next moment can play for another. It reminds me of Declan and Jack Grealish, mm. both of whom had to toss up in their minds, mm. is it going to be Ireland? Is it going to be England? And we know what happened there. Well, I think there's a case to be made for if you make an international appearance, a full international appearance, irrespective of whether it's a friendly yeah. or a competitive match that that should be a disqualification for playing for another country. I think if you've gone through the through the international framework, you've played for the 15s, the 17s, and 19s, the 21s, there might be a case to be made that actually your career doesn't go internationally any further forward, a la Wilfred Zaha, and you're left in an international wilderness. Yeah. And if you've got legitimate heritage, I always used to laugh about Clinton Morris and playing for Ireland, because I think the only heritage he had is every now and again he ate a bag of crisps, which were made of potatoes. I'm not entirely sure there was anything more Irish about Clinton than that. But he ends up playing for the Republic of Ireland. Yeah. Um, but the bottom line is, if you've got real legit... And, he, you know, he, he was born in Ivory Coast. Obviously, there's an added benefit for for the Ivor, Ivorians. But yes. They've got Wilfred yeah. Zaha in a dressing room with him that will be in his ear. But I, I believe that if you make an international appearance, a full cap for your country... Then that's you. Then you are in... And then it becomes about your performances that give you an opportunity to be an international player going forward. I'd agree with that, Simon. So the rules, in other words, need to be stricter because at the moment, eligibility rules under FIFA, players can switch if they've played no more than three we need competitive to val- matches at senior level. We need to value the absolute prestige and privilege that you have for choosing to play for a country. If you have, I mean, for, in this instance, the boy will be in the dressing room with Wilfred Zaha. He will have been uh, pitched a woo, I suspect, repeatedly by the national coach. They haven't been able to sell him it yet, so they're getting someone else's vision. Someone else's vision is England's vision. We put him, he's playing in, in, in the domestic leagues. He's, mm. he's championing himself by being brilliant in Crystal Palace's side. He's called up to the international setup, and so the vision arrives. And other people want the vision once it's arrived. Now, that might be a little bit unfair because they might have been pitching him a woo before, but he's chosen to play for England. Yeah. And whilst the try and buy mentality has some merit, I don't think once you've had that phenomenal privilege to play for your country uh, amongst the list of maybe 12, 1,300 people, or however many it is, that have had the privilege to pick up an England cap, yeah. that is you locked in. You then become... Um, you know, you're a representative of this country. You're an England player. You've got an England cap, and it should be that. Now, if yeah, if if it's 17s, 19s, and 21s, and there's and you're not looking like you're going to break away into the framework of the fourth setup, then of course you don't want young men to not have an opportunity to play international football if well, there's a genuine allegiance to the country that they've got an opportunity to play for. See, I was going to say though, with respect, by your logic, there Zaha wouldn't be playing international football at all. Then, indeed. Well, I mean. So that's not fair, is it? Well, it's not fair. He, in, could, he, he well, resorted to plan but, but, B and it's worked out well but, for him. But hold on. That's assuming... Matty Cash is the same. That's assuming that Wilfred Zaha, just because he didn't get what he wanted in 2013, wouldn't have got what he wanted in 2016. You know, you make a case. I made it yesterday. Well, Andros Townsend got into the England setup in the, you know, between 2014 and 2016. Is he a better player than Wilfred Zaha? No. I would hasten to add probably not. So there's an opportunity for Wilfred Zaha. At the time when Wilfred Zaha wanted his international recognition, it wasn't forthcoming. Yeah. He was pitched a woo by Ivory Coast. He jumped. Now, he might have jumped before he was pushed, or he might have jumped a little bit precipitously because he would have got the opportunity to play for England because his performances for Crystal Palace over the next three or four years might have merited it. See, I, I think, basically what you're saying is the rules need to be tighter. I do. I think um, so. Once you've got a full England cap, once you've th- got a full cap, yeah. For, for your country, you're, you're in. in. Yeah, and, and you're that's in my means, view. And you're in there means you're out anywhere else. See, Declan Rice played three times for Ireland at yep. senior level. Yep. I mean, I understand that there is, uh, you know, a, a series of contradictions to my particular argument. But notwithstanding it, I still think yep. that there is a situation. If you if you can get to the stage where you make an international debut, not an under 21s or an under 19s or in a youth tournament in the 17s and 15s, but at full international level, you are in the game. Yeah. You're not a secret, you're an international footballer 
playing on for one, England on one occasion. Well, I think so. I think once you've got a full cap, does that carry full prestige? Having played for well, your country, do once? we value? I mean, I value the principles of this country. I value the heritage of it. I value, despite the diminishing of it by a variety of people and for different reasons, I value the principles of this country. And I think it is such a privilege to get a full international cap. It should be cherished, built upon, and it then shouldn't be just cast away with an opportunity to play for a peripheral country because you're a not peripheral country. Well, if you're not good enough for England... Compared to your one. Well, if you're not good enough to it for England, then you're playing for someone else that considers you to be good enough whilst England don't. So by definition, True. there's an element I, I see where of, you're of the, lesser, the lesser of the two. But, but, but did you not describe a game like tonight as meaningless? England, I, yeah, England Cote d'Ivoire, it, it, meaningless. It, so if you play once it, for England tonight, that's you in, win. In terms, Can't be that in, terms of the, in terms of me watching the game and wanting to get something from it about the competitive spirit of us winning a World Cup, I look at it and say, these fixtures are meaningless for me as the viewer. They shouldn't be meaningless. I'm an individual. I don't represent the people that go to the stadium and spend tens of hundreds of pounds to put 80,000 fans inside a stadium. So I'm on an island of my own in that respect to some extent. Okay. But the bottom line is, it shouldn't be meaningless for those that... Are, I tell you what, if I was a player rather than a viewer and I was picked for England against whomsoever it was I was getting a cap, it wouldn't be bloody meaningless to me then. No, no. I mean, Matthew Gold is saying this morning, caps are thrown around like confetti nowadays. In, I don't indeed. see the problem. A cap isn't as valued as it, as it well, that, was But that anymore. doesn't make... OK, that's great, but that doesn't make it right, does it? What we have is a, you know... A, 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 so, by your human... logic, Simon, then, let's get this right. One cap and that's you. You can't be debt when playing three times for Ireland, then go to England. I think once you've been picked for the full national side, it makes the consideration of picking players, uh, you know, far more meaningful. It also makes their ideals behind being very effective when they play for England an important part of the equation. Because let's be clear, it isn't people's prejudice that stops people from getting other caps. It's people's performances. So if your performances aren't good enough for England and you end up playing for the Ivory Coast, is that a win for you? Well, let's go with that. Let's put it out there. I mean, switching allegiances at, at the moment the rules are under FIFA's eligibility rules that players can switch if they've played no more than three competitive matches is that too loose should it be down to one you play once for your country at senior level and that's it you can't play for any other country that's basically what Simon is suggesting this morning 03717 Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.